mentioned here, I will not because I am not going to discuss them again. The other two will come little later. One, this is called uh, okay. Technical name is can you read there is it's called Bremsstrahlung. Now Bremsstrahlung is basically it's, it's a German word. It, it's called breaking radiation. Breaking radiation means so what happens is essentially you know this is schematically shown. If an electron comes a uh, very fast now fast means how fast is another question. But assume that it's very fast means highly energetic. So if highly energetic electron comes and you have some target which is uh, sort of a solid metal or any high Z elements, then all the electrons will interact with these atoms and they will be deflected or they will be stopped. So when, but you know the nucleus size is very small. Even if you have solid metal, most of the solid part nucleus is extremely small. So then essentially it is not completely reflected. What happens is basically it is deflected at a various angles and as a result of this deflection, there is a change in energy of the electron. What? Now, where does the energy go? Energy cannot go anywhere. Energy has to go. Energy has to be conserved. So that part has to be radiated as a uh, in the form of electromagnetic radiation. So, if the energy of the incident electron is very large, then the sort of difference between two energies, incident and outgoing, will also be equivalently large. And then whatever radiation is coming out has to have highly energetic radiation. So then in that process, typically you get X-ray. Now, uh, maybe I should have shown some of the spectrum of how this X-ray look like, but this will be a sort of continuum because you don't know what energy will come out. That depends on what is the angle it is, uh, electron is deflecting, and that angle in turn defect uh, will, deter, will be deter based on what is the actual perpendicular distance between nucleus and electron, etc. So you get a wide range of X-rays. I mean, if you start with a very low energy X-ray, then intensity will increase as the energy increases it will the highest energy x-rays you can get is equivalent to the highest energy of the incident electron so suppose you are accelerating electrons to let's say uh, 10 kE then highest you can get is 10 kE x-ray if you are accelerating electrons up to let's say 40 kE then highest you will get to 40 kE but this acceleration how does the acceleration comes electron is a charged particle so if it passes through electric field it will accelerate so, in order to accelerate electron up to let's say 10 kV or 40 kV, 50 kV X-rays, you need equivalently high electric field. So, you need a 10 kV, 10,000 volts electric field or maybe 50,000 volt electric field. Now, that is sort of quite high. Normally, you know the electric, field, electric voltage is which encounter here of the order of 100 volts or maybe few hundred volts. But here we want few thousand and if you more higher and higher energy X-rays, it has to go very light, uh, large. So, one I mean, if you want to generate X-rays using this, then you have to have very large electric field. So this is one part. Now this is important because uh, most of the X-rays which you encounter in our day-to-day -day life, they are generated with this. Like if you go to medical X-rays, they have uh, this X-ray tube. If you go to even that airport X-ray scanners and all, everywhere you, the X-rays are generated with this technique, which is uh, with these X-ray tubes. The other method is this. Uh, Okay, it requires extreme magnetic field as well. uh, In this case, what happens is basic process is same, but there is no nucleus here. You know, if there is a magnetic field and if electron is passing through it, the force of electron will be perpendicular to the velocity direction. So then, in if you have constant magnetic field, then the electron has to pass through a circular orbit. If it is only for short period magnetic field, then it will just be deflected. Now. A process of deflection itself is sort of acceleration. It's, it's a change in velocity. Acceleration is basically change in velocity. So here this also involve, it must involve some sort of radiation and that radiation is called a synchrotron radiation. So this synchrotron radiation is another uh, method by which, so most of the, if you know, uh, X-ray generators for big research facilities and all, they are based on this. So this is called a synchrotron facility. Uh, you know, okay, this picture looks small. But this is a very large circle. It's uh, of, of the order of I think uh, I forgot this exact location where it is because there are a number of other such facilities in world. But uh, this can go up to maybe tens of meters to hundreds of meters um, radius, and then uh, accordingly, the electrons are moving along with the various circles, and there are some magnetic location. It will deflect, and then here you have all this uh, research 
stations. So the point here is that you get a very large flux with whatever controlled energy etc. But again, in order to generate this, what you need is a very very large magnetic field. So basically you need an extreme magnetic field. The other two processes which really come is, uh, one is sort of radiation and another is temperature. Okay, so uh, let's see. Again, you know all the things. You know basic atom structure. There are various shells. Innermost shells are filled first, outermost shells are filled later. Suppose you have a radiation, very large energy radiation, like for example X rays. Need not be X rays, it can be other ionized particles. Let's say if you have ionized electron beams or ionized alpha particle beams, then it will interact with one of the innermost shell electrons, it will eject, but then you have some vacancy in between. So, electrons from outer shell will uh, jump into it and radiate the equivalent energy. So now, you know this uh, energy diagram also you are aware. This is given for uh, hydrogen atom. Hydrogen atom, the lowest n equal to 0 to n equal to 2. This wavelength, uh, do anybody remember the number? 6563 6563 6563 no 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 hydrogen atom this is called uh, hydrogen lyman alpha line 6563 is your in uh, visible range it's a green light lyman lyman balmer is a visible this is a second these are called second level transition when electron from higher uh, shell comes to n equal to 2 then you will get balmer series which is this is what 6563 is visible by Balmer line. If it comes to n equal to 1, which is a deeper shell, then the energies are in ultraviolet. This is called hydrogen uh, H alpha, which is a very prominent line. In fact, a lot of research goes in astronomy in this particular wavelength. It's called H alpha. If you uh, want to know energy, it's a 13.6 E. So it's, it's ultraviolet. Now, what happens? This is for hydrogen. Hydrogen means Z equal to 1, 1 proton in the center. If your proton numbers increases, that means if you go higher and higher Z elements, then the energies of the first level goes deeper and deeper. So that means for anything, any uh, atom more than Z equal to let's say 6 or 8, that is carbon, oxygen. So for any uh, atom heavier than oxygen, this K alpha line is in X-ray. So if you have, but what it requires is it requires incident radiation which must be higher and of energy higher than this particular uh, KF uh, Then only it will be able to excite this KH electron, otherwise it will not be able to excite. So that means if you want to generate X-rays with this, then you need a similar or even higher, higher energy X-rays, first of all, you know, uh, to incident on your uh, target or whatever your uh, subject. So, I mean, again, in this case, you require this radiation, but then basically what you are talking is primarily how do you get the radiation. So, if you, uh, I mean, so in this case, either you saw that you need either extreme magnetic field, extreme electric field, or equivalent type of radiation, or the other way, again, this part I want to know. Uh, you know about this Wayne's displacement law? Yes. So, uh, you know, now the B I have given. It is slightly different units. You might be aware about a different number, which goes about 10 to the power minus something. Here, what I have given is a nanometer of scanning. The reason is because they are interested in X rays. So, X ray, if you typically take 1 nanometer, you immediately see that your temperature has to be a million degree Kelvin. Now, million degrees is a really large. I mean, typically, most of the time, what we encounter is something like uh, this. You know, this curves also. These are all black body radiation. 6000. Why 6000 is shown here? Because you know surface of sun is 6000 degree Kelvin. If you have 6000 degree Kelvin temperature, then the peak of your thermal emission is in uh, yellow region, that's a visible region. But it, it does have significant emission across uh, outside the visible spectrum also. I mean, we have some UV light, you will also have some infrared. As the temperature decreases, the peak shifts to Infrared. So if the temperature increases, the peak will shift to uh, ultraviolet and eventually X-ray. 
So uh, as you saw here, so if the temperature goes up to let's say about 1 million degree Kelvin, then you expect the peak to be in excess. So in order to generate excess, well, either you need this extreme electric field, extreme magnetic field, extreme radiation environment, or temperature. Now, uh, this kind of temperature are generally not seen anywhere else in entire universe. Typically, okay, there are some possible sites. We will discuss about them. So, uh, okay, this is the same curve plotted here. You know the difference between these two. I mean, uh, this sometimes is quite confusing, so that's why I've given you both of them. Both of both, both these are identical. For example, it's a 6,000 Kelvin if you see here and 6,000 Kelvin if you see here. Only difference is just the scale and log and uh, y, y axis is log, x axis is log, etc. So uh, just by looking at it, sometimes I mean, I do get a lot of students who are confusing. Somebody says, okay, the, uh, the blackboard now looks like this, and why you are showing like this? But that is just a way of how do you present it. Both of them are equally correct. Oh, plotted this for so many temperatures. Why so many temperatures? 1000 Kelvin, 6000 Kelvin, 30, 40,000 Kelvin. Uh, the reason is now if you see stars in sky, there are different colors stars you see. The range of temperature which you see from star is this. I mean, the coolest star you see up to about maybe not even 1000, maybe 1500 or 2000 degree Kelvin. The hottest star you see is about 40,000 degree Kelvin. You cannot see stars having temperature more than 40 or 50 thousand degree Kelvin at the most. Okay. Uh, now again, now uh, just a slide this case. I mean, based on this, you know how do you actually measure the temperature of the stars? How? Doppler shift. I mean, you have this answer here itself. What you do is you simply measure at a small wavelength here. You measure three points and you know what is the temperature. I mean, this is precisely the tool you use to determine the star temperature. So if you want to measure some particular star temperature, you have an arrow wavelength filter. You measure intensity at one wavelength, intensity at other wavelength, intensity at one more wavelength. 